Donald Trump fights Alvin Bragg's attempt to gag him even further. Trump was obviously precluded from talking bad about people that the judge already identified in a prior gag order, but Bragg says it wasn't enough. He wants it to go even further to include this person, Judge Juan Mercon's daughter named Lauren Mercon. And there's a story here from the New York Post saying that this woman is a major Democrat operative and people have been doing some good digging on this. We also have a podcast from her where she's saying that she talked to daddy the judge and he doesn't like like Trump's tweets. But now Bragg is saying, because Trump has said some stuff about that, saying, hey, maybe the judge is a little bit more biased than everyone's letting on. Maybe it's appropriate to question why these judges have Democrat operatives in their family and why they're talking about Donald Trump's tweets and all these things. So Bragg says, this is terrible for our case. So we would like to gag Trump even harder. And Trump's team has responded and reaction, of course, to this whole kerfuffle coming up. But here's the article from the New York Post, which gives us some good background on this. And you see, it tells us from Jim John Levine and Richard Calder, they tell us that the Dem clients, so Democrat clients of Lauren Mercon, the judge's daughter, in the Trump hush money case, they raised $93 million off the case, right? So not only is it just general money, you know, she's out there saying, Adam Schiff's an amazing guy because he's going to fight for your rights as an American. Donate, right? It's not that. It's that they're saying Trump is being prosecuted and he's a felon and all this stuff, right? So they're raising money off the prosecution that daddy is handling. So here's the photograph of the judge and the daughter telling us two major Democratic clients of the daughter, Lauren, who's overseeing the Trump hush money trial, the judges, have raised at least 93 million in campaign donos. Oh no. And they've used the cases in their solicitation emails, raising new concerns that the jurist, the judge, has a major conflict of interest. No kidding. Trump attorneys are now considering filing another motion demanding that the Manhattan judge, Juan, recuse himself. But the the judge's daughter seen below, Lauren, is the president of this organization called Authentic Campaigns, which is a Chicago-based progressive political consulting firm whose top clients include the infamous censured Adam Schiff, the guy who lied to America multiple times, and then got censured, which is just a total embarrassment. He should feel like a loser because that's what the censure means. So he was the lead prosecutor in Trump's first impeachment trial, hmm, and the Senate Majority Pact, which is a major party fundraiser. So judge Judge's daughter, daddy, is prosecuting Trump. Judge's daughter is going and raising money against Trump. Isn't that convenient? Keep it in the family. Now, Authentic Campaigns, and thus the judge's daughter, is actively making money for this sham attack against Trump, rendering Judge Mercon conflicted out. Daughter's making money. That's her whole job. She's getting paid by shift to go raise money from stupid Democrats. Trump spokesman Stephen Chung told The Post, adding that the evidence of bias is even clearer now than it was in August when Judge Juan rejected his first recusal motion. No, no, I'm totally not that biased at all. The judge should do the right thing and immediately re recuse himself in order to show the American people that the Democrats have not destroyed our justice system completely. Not yet. Him continuing to be involved in this crooked Joe Biden directed witch hunt is a complete violation of the applicable rules, the regulations, and the ethics. Now, Shifty Shift's campaign for Senate scored an eye-popping $20 million in aid since he began soliciting donations off Trump's unprecedented 34-count indictment. Now, Trump has pleaded not guilty all the felony counts involving Stormy and Karen McDougal, who were the two women who apparently got payments. He was denied having affairs with them. And if Trump's convicted, four years in prison. All right. So this is the judge's daughter, who I guess is like in an ice hotel skiing around somewhere. Great. Right? So here's Shifty, who is censured. Shift's fundraising email. This is what Shift says. And maybe this is even Lauren typing this crap up. She's like, oh, hey, dad, what do you think of this fundraising email for Pencil Neck? Shift's fundraising email, which may or may not have been written by Lauren, may have been written by the judge. Who knows? It is a song moment, says this email, and unprecedented for a former president to be indicted, but his alleged offenses are also unprecedented. Trump will respond as he always does, playing the victim and blaming others for having the temerity to investigate him in the first place. Here's Schiff. Schiff's continued email, he requested supporters donate $10, and the Senate Majority Political Action Committee, which supports the Democrat Senate campaigns, pocketed $73.6 million since it began firing off emails as well. Here's some of their emails, the group said in an email. Breaking news, Donald Trump indicted by Manhattan Grand Jury. This is an important moment for our democracy, but our work isn't over. We must continue to protect the Senate majority from the GOP extremists. Please give us money. Here, breaking news, right? Here's the email from Shifty's campaign for Senate. And that's the judge's daughters working on this. And the judge is prosecuting Trump, essentially. I mean, he's, you know, the judge, but okay. And here is Schiff raising money off of the effort. Isn't that fun? Now, Lauren Mercon, who also worked for Kamala and her presidential campaign, she was 
was, quote, the director of digital persuasion. So she is a Democrat operative, clearly. So now you can follow the bouncing ball from Murkan back over to Kamala, has said that her father detests politicians using Twitter, clearly in reference to Trump. Now I pulled this clip, says, I've actually had a couple conversations, this is Lauren talking, with my dad recently, where he's kind of like, you know, I hate that politicians use Twitter. June 2019, guess who was using Twitter? Trump, until they banned him. And like, it's so unprofessional, you know, that's not how a politician should behave themselves. And I explained that like, yeah, I think there's a lot of instances where it's not used to be like that. We'll listen to her say it. I pulled the clip. I don't need to reenact it, but here she is. Now this was on a podcast and it's about a minute. We've got a clip from the judge. Judge's daughter says here from the caption, it says Lauren Mercon and Jonathan Barnes guests to discuss the concept of authenticity and authentic campaigns in U.S. elections. We break down the concept of authenticity and here it is. Now, June 16th, 2019, Apple Podcast. Take on why digital in particular is a useful medium for candidates to convey authenticity. So I've actually had a couple conversations with my dad ah. recently where he's kind of like, Judge. hate that politicians use Twitter and like, it's so unprofessional and you know, that's not how a politician should behave themselves. And I explained that like, yeah, I think there are a lot of instances where it is not used and like when our president tweets anything that he thinks and like, that's not what he should be using it for. But the pro is that candidates aren't sort of at the mercy of the traditional media anymore. And candidates like to go back to AOC can, even if they aren't getting the attention that they need or want, can get out there in another way. Yeah, I think. All right, so then that other dude goes on and for something else. But daddy doesn't like Trump's tweets. And Trump is using social media wrong, right? Even though he was so effective at it that they had to literally ban him from everything because it was too persuasive because he was speaking the truth and everybody could see it. How can you sell a rigged election if the guy can expose it all and he can just be the figurehead of the opposition to continue to rally against the rigging. So dad hates tweeting, right? That's Judge Juan Mercon's daughter apprising us all of this. Now, Judge Juan on Tuesday imposed a limited gag order. Now, Alvin Bragg wants to tighten that puppy up to include the judge's daughter so that we can't talk about this anymore because it's so damning to their case. But here, such as stop him from, you know, bashing witnesses like the liars, Michael Cohen, who by the way, they weren't gagged. They're still on with Jen Psaki having conversations with her about all this stuff. Trump is still going to be allowed to rip Alvin Bragg. Good. Doesn't bar comments about Mercon or his family, but we're going to see that Bragg wants to close that up. Now, a spokesman for the New York State Supreme Court claimed that Lauren Mercon deleted the account, which was once linked to authentic, and she says she no longer controls it. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's true. But people like Laura Loomer have been doing some serious digging on this, and they've got the screenshots and the receipts of when stuff was deleted and the archives and all the different connections, crisscross and everything. So we know it was her Twitter account. Maybe the judge is such a hater, said Trump, because his daughter makes money working to get Trump. Yeah, daddy doesn't want to undermine the daughter. And when he rules against me over and over, he is making her company and her richer and richer. And they don't like those posts. So Juan, who donated $15 to former Vice President Joe in 2020. So the judge, not only is Lauren donating to Act Blue and other things, but the judge is also donating to Joe Biden. And he's ruling over Trump. Give me a break has supported other Democratic causes. They did not return messages. Yeah, messages left for his daughter and her firm were not returned. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so Trump was on a tear over the weekend, all over True Social, blasting these people, and rightfully so, because we have questions about this. They want us to believe that this is a free and nonpartisan, non-biased justice system that just happens to be prosecuting this like any other case, above board, with no nefariousness whatsoever. Nobody buys it when the judge is raising funds for Trump opponents, working for Kamala, and daddy's donating to Joe. Give me a break. So here's Bragg, right? After Trump has been calling them out on this, Bragg responds, he whines over to the judge. Your Honor, we respectfully submit this pre-motion letter requesting that you clarify or you confirm what you said in your prior order and you direct Donald Trump from immediately, order him to desist from attacks on the family members and to prevent more offensive conduct. But here's what they say say, right? Your Honor, can we have permission for this? As a result, the court should make abundantly clear that the order protects the family members of the court and all other individuals, and you should warn Donald Trump that his recent conduct is contumacious. Oh, that's your big word of the day, contumacious. It's like in contempt of the court, right? You're acting in contemptuous behavior. And direct him to immediately desist. If the defendant continues to disregard such orders, he should face sanctions under the law. All right, so he's referencing Donald Trump's true social posts, you know, saying that Trump is 
was specifically targeting the daughter who happens to be raising money for Democrats. All right, big deal. And being involved in politics, right? You know, kind of talking to daddy about Trump's tweets. Daddy is presiding over Trump now. That is what Bragg's team submitted. And here is the actual filing from Bragg's office submitted to Judge Juan Mercon saying, Your Honor, Donald Trump has dangerous and violent and reprehensible rhetoric that fundamentally threatens the integrity of these proceedings. And Donald Trump's rhetoric is intended to intimidate witnesses and trial participants alike, including this court. Accordingly, submit this memo in further support of our request, which is to clarify and confirm that your order restricts Trump from talking about your Democrat daughter and other individuals, and also warn Donald Trump about his recent conduct, that it's contumacious, and direct that the defendant immediately desist from attacks on family members like your DNC daughter. Now, to the extent that your original order did not already prohibit Trump, this court can and should clarify or extend the order to protect the family members of this court because any future disregard, warn them, will be based and face sanctions. So here's Bragg. He says, you know, Your Honor, based on a factual record that the people, our prosecutor, government, bureaucrats, have assiduously documented since Trump's arraignment, this court judiciously implemented step-by-step -step measures to control him and to allow him the maximum amount of speech. But after a series of statements from Trump, including threatening death and destruction if he was indicted and posting a photo of himself wielding a baseball bat at the back of the DA's head, which I think that was fake, by the way. Trump does post, they say, statements which required an extensive public safety response. We all had to freak out. This court admonished Trump to refrain from statements that are going to incite violence and civil unrest. But Trump refused to refrain from his disruptive, and look at this, his terrifying speech. And then in response to the people's motions for narrow limits on the extrajudicial speech, Trump's lawyers swore to this court that they could and they would self-regulate him. They'll muzzle him himself. Trump proved himself totally incapable of self-regulating. Going so far as to refer to one potential trial witness last week as death. This is Bragg asking for a stricter gag order on Trump, saying, Judge, with the start of trial imminent on April 15th, right around the corner, and all other least restrictive measures having failed, including your order, it's time to act. Donald Trump responded after you put your gag order out. He responded, your gag order wasn't enough, it just instigated him. Trump immediately responded by launching a barrage of attacks, not only on this court, but also on members of this court's family, including by posting a photograph of the judge's political daughter, Lauren, on his true social accounts. He's giving speeches and doing podcasts, working for Kamala. These attacks were based on transparent falsehoods, like what? Such as the claim that a family member had made a post on social media. In fact, the social media account cited by the defendant was a fraudulent impersonation. Yeah, right. Who is this from? New York Times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go look at Laura Loomer's account. You tell me if you think it's fake or not, right? But the facts are beside the point for this defendant from Trump. They don't want you to talk about the facts, okay? Honestly, like this is such a cope right here, but the facts are beside the point. Well, cause that's cause your facts are not true. Yeah, so of course they're beside the point. You don't wanna spend any time on those facts because you know they're false and you know that Judge Juan Mercon has already endorsed his position. This is the official position of the court, which just happens to be very self-serving for the judge. Isn't that convenient? The court says that the judge's daughter deleted the account a long time ago and it's not hers. Isn't that nice? Weird. Whatever, judge. So indeed, the defendant Trump, right? But that's all beside the point because if you look into the facts, you'll find the truth. Indeed, Trump has instead insisted that he is constitutionally entitled to engage in protected campaign speech against this court's family based on yet another false claim that the family member is actively supporting adversarial campaign speech by Trump's political opponents. We just went through the article. Her political organization is working for Democrats, including Kamala. So here's the language from the prosecution. But again, this is from the letter that they're responding to. So we're going to read Trump's letter in a minute. They say there is no constitutional right to target the family of this court, let alone on blatant falsehoods that have served as the flimsiest of pretexts for the defendant's attacks. Now, defendant knows what he's doing. Everyone else does too. What, talking about your corruption? Yeah, thank you for doing it. We all know exactly what Trump intends because he said for decades that part of his life philosophy is to go after his perceived opponents as viciously and violently as he can, saying he has said for decades that he attacks his perceived opponents viciously and violently, both because it is a good feeling and because other people will see you doing it, standing up for yourself. Yeah, and he promised very recently, if you go after me, Trump says, I'm coming after you. And they're citing all of his posts. Like Trump's gonna, you know, insurrect the whole country all over again. He is carrying out that promise right now, judge. He's coming after your daughter. Now Trump's conduct since this court issued, the March 26 order is all the record that is necessary to justify another order from you, judge.
judge saying family's off limit. Trump is awaiting trial on felony charges for a bunch of spreadsheet crimes and has offered been offered many opportunities to conform his behavior without disruption. Now, Trump's continued harassing and his disruptive conduct thus remains and demands clarification and expansion of this order to show that the family is also protected from harm and all witnesses are going to be protected to preserve the rule of law in the face of Trump's extreme and deliberate provocations. He's pointing to facts. This woman works for these people. Trump's claim of a constitutional constitutional right to levy personal attacks on family members is as disturbing as it is wrong. Again, he's not asking for the right to do that, but he is asking for the right to speak freely. And part of that includes criticism on people in society. That's part of free speech. Now, this court has already held that, even assuming the highest scrutiny under the First Amendment, narrow restrictions on Trump's statements are permissible, since it's inflammatory, says there's absolutely no reason to reach a different conclusion here. And the harm to the orderly administration of justice is now being magnified because Trump Trump, right, here you go, jurors might hear about this. Other trial participants will observe Trump's attacks and understand that if this court's family is fair game, so then are theirs. They're more concerned, I think, about not being intimidated by this. They're more concerned about seeing this judge as a biased partisan hack because his daughter is doing $100 million for Democrats. Now, the undertow generated by the statements are going to be a problem judge, saying Trump's vague reference to the constitutional problems suggests that he believes he may have a higher entitlement to attack family members than trial participants. But there's no doctrine of constitutional law that says that you have stronger First Amendment protections to target family members of the presiding judge. Okay, you're right. We agree. There is no constitutional amendment that says you can attack the judge, like verbatim. But there is a right to petition your government for a redress of grievances and a right to speak freely about what is happening in the justice system. And when we talk about free speech, that is when it's at its apex, when it's at its top, when you are oppositional to your government or during an election season when you petition your government to change the government. Trump is running to change the government. We are, through as voters, participating in the so-called democratic process by saying, Trump, we like your policies better than this. This corrupt, garbage justice system that has been watered down and broken by the Democrats is no longer serving us. We want you to be reelected so that you can fix all of that. Trump happens to be being prosecuted by it, but he's also talking about a campaign issue that is is near and dear to our hearts. In fact, it's basically the whole point of this channel. So by denying that, not only is it abrogating Trump's free speech rights, but it's also limiting ours to hear from him about issues we care about. So it is supposed to be the utmost protection. And this other, you know, judge's daughter, she is voluntarily participating in this whole game. She is literally working in politics and not just like going around knocking on doors, okay? Working for Kamala, working for Schiff, raising hundreds of millions of dollars doing so. So it's very convenient her daddy is prosecuting the president. Now, unlike like trial participants who at least are involved in the proceeding involving the defendant, family members have nothing to do with this criminal trial except by the dint of their personal relationships. Yes, they do. This is a political prosecution, which is Trump's right to make that argument. They don't get to say, no, it isn't. And then that's the end of the story. We get, as the American people, the right to judge between the two. They say it's legitimate and above board. We say it's not. They don't get the right to just say, well, we say it is. So therefore you're done. That's what they're trying to do. Now, as the district court in Trump's DC criminal criminal prosecution observed, and we saw this from the very beginning. This is the domino game, right? Shutkin observed. She ordered restrictions. She says there's no First Amendment value to allowing attacks on family members who have nothing to do with the case. Your distinction. We think she has everything to do with the case because it's partisan. Says, in what world is it permissible, Mr. Lauro? In what case would it be allowable for a criminal defendant to attack a prosecutor's family? Well, when the prosecutor's showing bias and the family might have some part in that. So pick any one of them. Now, the only fig leaf of a justification that Trump references is his claim to the court's family member is actively supporting Biden. But the suggestion that Trump is merely engaging in political counter speech is an obvious fiction. Really? None of Trump's attacks in the past week consist of campaign advocacy. Instead, he has viciously and falsely smeared the court and the family member for no other reason than because the court's presiding is over his criminal trial. Oh my gosh, are they that dumb? The argument is that the judge's judgment is biased because his daughter is a Democrat operative. The only possible purpose for these personal attacks 
facts can be to impede the orderly administration of this trial. You know, it's very sneaky, but you can't criticize the judge because that might impact the orderly administration of the trial. You see how that works? It's like kind of a bait and switch. It's a fake facade. It's a Trojan horse. It's the administration of justice is the facade. But what they're really talking about is limiting your criticism of the court for their bias, their partisanship, their unethical behavior, their procedural misconduct, their legal errors. They don't want you to see any of that. But if you criticize it or you say maybe they're partisan, oh, you're impeding the administration of justice now. So that is the very harm that led this court to impose the March 26 order in the first place, the orderly administration of justice. Now, as Judge Reggie B. Walton recently observed, the rule of law can only function effectively when we have judges who are prepared to carry out their duties without the threat of potential physical harm to themselves and their families. I mean, that's important, definitely, but it's not functioning effectively. And by the way, physical harm and threats against judges, which would include potential physical harm, already crimes. Judge, you should know that. So you don't need to start censoring people to prohibit that. It's already a crime, right? People are already making threats. Go prosecute them. They already are. Judge Cannon had somebody who threatened her prosecuted aggressively. Now, the claim about the court's family member is also a blatant falsehood that this court rejected last year. As Bragg explained in our response, there's no factual support and the advisory committee on ethics already said it's not a big deal. This court already admonished Trump's defense lawyers to adhere to the facts and they've immediately disregarded those admonitions and they keep repeating this baseless claim. Now, the issue here, says Bragg, is not complicated. Family members of trial participants must be strictly off limits. Defendants insistent on the contrary speaks of a dangerous sense of entitlement that could instigate this and cause physical harm to the loved ones of your daughter, judge. This court should make immediately clear that he's prohibited from making statements about family members. And finally, Bragg notes that in our motion, the people ask this court to put Trump on notice, that Trump will forfeit any statutory right that he may have to access juror names if he threatens the safety and the integrity of the jury or the jury selection process. So again, administration of justice is just like democratic institutions, okay? It's just a fake moniker that says you can't criticize what we're doing, whether it's the Ukraine war, whether it's the border, whether it's economic policy, whether it's their judicial policy. You can't criticize us because you're un-American if you do. Trust the judges, trust the Fauci's. The court granted the people's motion to restrict the disclosure, saying further holding that a decision on the people's motion provides notice and the people respectfully request that you clarify this order and warn Donald Trump that he needs to abide. Signed by, you know the name, Matthew Colangelo, the guy who came down from the DOJ to specifically prosecute Trump, right? Because Bragg couldn't figure out how to do this on his own. So they brought out this DOJ guy, Matthew Colangelo, who we're gonna learn a lot more about here soon. So, okay, that is what went into Judge Juan Mercan's courtroom. And this is the letter that Trump sent back into response. Trump says, all right, Your Honor, we're writing in response. All right, the gag order does not need to be expanded. Here's why. The express terms of the gag order do not apply in any manner whatsoever claimed by Bragg, which they seem to acknowledge by suggesting that we need to avoid any doubt. So it's pretty clear. So they need to get clarity on it to avoid any doubt. Now that gag order has been publicly interpreted in the way that President Trump reads it, that the gag order has been publicly interpreted in the way that Trump reads it, further supports the defense position on the order's meaning. So we know what it means, Judge, you know what it means, Bragg knows what it means, but he's using, let's avoid any doubt to get some tightness on this. Now, as a result, Trump's defense says, there was nothing contumacious about the social media posts cited in footnote one of the people's pre-motion letter, and there was no warning, and so no warning would be appropriate. We followed the rules. That is particularly true in light of the fact that the defense objected to the vagueness of the proposed gag order in opposition to the people's motion. And so contrary to Bragg's suggestion, the court cannot direct President Trump to do something that the gag order does not even require. To, quote, clarify or to confirm the meaning of the gag order that Bragg wants you to review would be to expand it. No expansion's appropriate on the basis of a one-page letter citing two cases, of course the motion came in, and where Trump's response has been restricted to a single page. We'll see if Trump gets a full opportunity to respond on this. But given the sensitivities associated with, you know, prior restraints on free speech, gagging someone, if the court wishes to consider such an expansion, a complete opportunity for a full adversarial briefing is necessary. But such briefing would address, you know, the constitutional problems that are attendant with any improper restrictions placed on protected campaign speech, which would implicate First Amendment rights that belong not only to President Trump, but to us, the public. Here, the family member referenced is actively supporting adversarial campaign speech by Trump's political opponents. Signed by Trump's amazing defense 
defense team, of course, Susan Nicholas and Todd Blanche doing great work on this case. And that is the filing. Now there will be more. So apparently at some point the judge granted this, Bragg submitted his motion, Trump will enter his reply. And my guess is the judge hurries this along very quickly. Maybe he expands it, he might expand it, but it would be something that would be done without an adversarial hearing, okay? So Trump asking for that is only gonna delay this, slow all this down, and the judge is not gonna allow that to happen if he can help it. So Bragg wants to tighten it up. Trump saying not necessary at all. The first gag is appropriate. And the daughter is involved in the politics of the 2024 election and is working for Trump's opponent or has worked for Trump's opponent. So that clearly implicates her and brings her in to this debate. Now, Trump, of course, has spoken about Lauren Mercan, as is his right to do so, not precluded or gagged from doing so. But the media is just going bananas with this, right? They're saying he should be put in jail for this. And they even dragged out this judge to come out and talk about it. In fact, this was the judge who was referenced in the motion. Judge Reggie Walton says, we're out here as federal judges. And this is unusual. This is a sitting judge coming out to comment on open cases, which of course is not entirely usual. And he is going to talk about his threats. And when his daughter and him were both attacked, very similar to Trump, of course. He comments about a judge, and it's particularly problematic when those comments are in the form of a threat, especially if they're directed at one's family. I mean, we do these jobs because we're committed to the rule of law, and we believe in the rule of law, and the rule of law can only function effectively when we have judges who are right. prepared to carry out their duties without the threat of potential physical harm. And you know personally tell us, uh, I judge. Mean, what this is like. Someone threatened your daughter once as well. Yeah, tell us. Yes, threatened me one day, and yeah. then the next day called and made a threat against my daughter. And all Were they investigated and arrested? I bet they were. Also had indicated my address, so they obviously had done some research to find out that I had a daughter and what yeah. her name and was. what happened? And also where I live. I mean, that must be terrifying. Oh, gosh. All right. The reason I play this, so you can see this little propaganda story, right? Judge Mercan's daughter, Lauren, is a political operative. She operates in the arena of politics. She raised $93 million for Schiff and Kamala. So she is part of the conversation. Saying that she should be precluded like she's some 17-year-old girl somewhere is ridiculous. And they're doing this propaganda to just try to create a narrative that Trump is like asking for the judge's daughter to be, you know, attacked or something, which has never been the case. But she is subject to scrutiny. That's why she's in the political arena is to engage in this battle. So here we go. Now, here is Ladoris. So the judge, this judge is saying, you know, enough already. All right. It's time to just throw Trump in jail. And what when happens, Trump just to throw this in there, what happens when Trump right. breaks that gag order on Truth Social or otherwise? Right. And you said when and not if. And I think you're right, Omar. When he steps across that gag order line, and I do hope it will be expanded, there should be only one response. Bring your toothbrush, Donald Trump, because you're going to sit in a Try jail it. cell for Try a while. Try it. Try there it. There has to be an immediate consequence when he <laughs> defies a court order. That is a normal response. You cannot have a court Try system it. that is subjected to these kinds of threats and intimidation. Nowhere else has this ever happened and gone on without any consequences. And that has to change and it has to change now. All right. So we'll see if Judge Wammer Khan does it. You kind of almost want this to escalate a little bit. You know, right? I never encourage anybody to, you know, violate a court order, but, you know, Trump's the president and we have a very, very contentious position that they have put us in by bringing political prosecutions against their political opponents. This is their doing, not ours, not Trump's. Trump didn't do what they're doing, right? There were a lot of rumors or talk that Trump was going to start indicting Hillary Clinton, never did that. And that was, I think, the right call, right? You sort of let that stuff go and focus on your future and your vision, but they have no future and no vision in the Democratic Party. They only live to prosecute Trump and now their opponents. And so what else are they going to do other than throw him in jail? Now, this is Nicole Wallace. Now, this clip was hysterical because, you know, I don't know what is wrong with her, but she has documents in her hand that apparently she's reading and reviewing, and she just throws them, you know, kind of like a Bill O'Reilly, well, do it live, whatever, right? Rah! Get rid of them. Like, she's not going to read from her script anymore, and then watch her. She just starts reading from the teleprompter. So she's like, I'm not going to read from these notes anymore. I'm just going to read from my teleprompter. But I guess it's some very, you know, big act of frustration. You know, it's time to do something different. Like, we're not going to have this conversation again. I have come on the air with breaking news about requests for gag orders because of threats for judges and their kids more times than I could count today before I got she's ready. And Judge Ludig, I think it's time. I don't know who has to write the banners at the bottom of my show. I'm sorry in advance. But Donald Trump broke the rule of law. And we should cover a broken judiciary in this country. Donald Trump managed to delay every federal criminal trial based on facts <laughs> that he barely denies. Donald Trump managed to enlist the Supreme Court in a delay process, the highest court in the land. Okay, here we Donald go. Trump brazenly and repeatedly attacks not just 
judges. And I've had the privilege of sitting across not just from you, Judge Ludig, but from Judge Esther Salas, whose son was assassinated by a crazy person. Judges don't have Secret Service protecting them. I mean, her child answered the door. What are we going to do different? Because Donald Trump sure as hell isn't changing. Wow. All right. So that so, was a really you know, nice job reading that little monologue there. Ah. All right. So you can see how fun that is over there. They're having a hard time. And of course, Weissman is saying that this is a crime, essentially, and Trump should be prosecuted. So last one, we're moving on. But here is just a bit of Weissman. So they're all like really upset about this because the last thing they want from Trump is for him to expose the whole grift, the whole scam. Like, how come there's not a judge that is just beyond reproach, who hasn't donated to the opposition? Okay, Judge McAfee donated to Fannie. We have the history of Mercon donating to Biden. You know, it's like a nonstop thing. We get a judge like Cannon, who's like middle of the road, and they freak out over it. So when you start to expose them, right, now you know you're over the target when you see every single one of them. They were out all day yesterday. Here's the final one. Trump's insulting the judge. And here's Weissman freaking out too. Trump has, whether there are sanctions that could be imposed right now. And I, one issue is whether his conduct is covered by the conditions set by Judge Mershan in his so-called gag order. And there, I think that there's no question that the gag order is not broad enough to cover the judge or the judge's family. It simply was not put in the gag order that Judge Mershan entered. And so you can't find a violation of something that is not covered. But that's not the only wow, wow. possible ground for finding that he has violated something here. And that is that a standard condition of being out on bail, and this applies <laughs> in New York, it applies uh, in the D.C. federal case, it he applies broke his in bond the condition. Georgia state case, is that you not commit a crime while you're out on bail. Katie, you know this very well. It is, in fact, I remember in the D.C. case being on air when the magistrate judge warned Donald Trump that the most important condition for him was that he not commit a crime. Well, you know what? Threatening the president of the United States is a crime. The question would be the legal question and factual one is whether what he is engaged in with respect to hosting the image, Joe Biden bound and gagged with what appears to be a bullet hole in his head <laughs> is so. constitutes that kind of threat. And the same thing could be true under New York law with respect to any conduct with respect to All right, charge him with a new uh, crime. judges, family members, personnel, that it's sort of an independent ground. Finally, the one thing- All right, we don't need to finally, all right, enough out of him. So gonna be new grounds, okay? So like they want him in jail. They are seething over this stuff. They can't take Trump's posts, right? Even on True Social, he's posting, you know, memes and stuff and they just, you know, outraged about it. So throw him in jail, charge him with a new crime, stop it already. Nicole Wallace is throwing her paperwork all over the place and doesn't even know the name of the person who writes her Chirons, which is very insulting to the Chiron guy. You know, come on, know who you work with, Nicole. I mean, be respectful. But anyways, the point is Alvin Bragg is fighting to tighten up the gag to expand it so that Trump is narrowly allowed to speak. He can't say as much stuff as he could previously, trying to gag him again. So Trump's team will respond to this. We'll see what the defense has when that motion drops. And of course, we'll be here continuing to cover not only this case, but all of the rest of the Trump litigation that is out there and afoot. So thanks for joining us as we continue on this journey. We appreciate you subscribing. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for inviting a friend or family member to come on over here and join us when we go live. We also have some great links in the description below. We would really love it if you became a member at watchingthewatchers.locals.com where we do streams in the morning. We do streams on Saturday. We have a great members only community. So come and join us. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one.